I am joined by Dara JN, who hit rank one with Sarah Tech. And while this may look like a simple Sarah Tech deck that you probably already know a decent amount about, I think there's definitely things you can learn from the way he went about constructing it and how he managed to operate in the confines of a very constrained high infinite meta. So, Dara, welcome to the show. What would you say was the best thing about this deck on your climb to rank one? Uh, just having every tech card available to you. Literally, like the whole point of the meta, or my my climb in the meta, was to just counter anything. So it's just like anything out there. There's only one real deck out there right now that can't really be countered easily by this, and that's what Hello? the deck me and you both hate. Hello, Hella. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like as long as I'm not facing Hella, which yep. I've actually changed a couple of cards since then to try and have a better Hella matchup, but it still doesn't work. Yep. Uh, but it's still. It's just every card in here, you got Shadow King, you got Killmonger, you have Shang, you have Enchantress. You have everything to counter. And Mobius, the number one Loki killer, which I, I definitely, that's a necessity in the high climb in Infinite right now. Uh, and it also kills Zabu, which is also just everywhere. So, yep. Which is great. So, and Sarah. <laughs> I think the number one question people are going to have, and it's the question I had when I saw this, and I guess I wouldn't even say I had a question. I was just like, oh, that's bad was uh, armor in the deck. But I, as I understand it, your methodology here was just have like one or two cards that are not in the typical Sarah list and try to scam eight cubes off of them. And armor is yep. one of those cards that lets you do that. It lets you like scam eight cubes, early snaps on locations like Death's Domain, easy wins on, against decks like Destroy, just like free early information knowing you have this card and knowing they don't know you have this card. Is that the entirety of the reason for armor here? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, like, it, there's uh, some other edge cases that you could do as well. Uh, like, I get it is mainly for scamming, but it's just like it's good to, into like sentry lists. Like, you could like lock their their void so that it mm. can't get killed. It can't get sent over. There's like a there's a lot of like uh random things that you can do with the the card. But yeah, it is mainly just the scam. It's mainly just as a random card. It does sometimes make it a little bit awkward because you can't play it out early, like for tempo, because you're like, oh, now I can't chi if I want to. But sometimes, if you're feeling, if you have like Enchantress and Chi in hand, you already have Zabu down, and you're, you know you're going to play Sarah out later, and you're going to be able to play like three card, four cards on last turn, you can play it out early, and people think they're safe, and then you just scam them even harder with the Enchantress Chi. So it's just like there's some, some uh, play in there just to try and. Uh, like it's it's gonna be overall like worse, I think, for your average win rate, but your average cube rate, I think, will go up because you're able to scam a little bit more. That is, of course, if you are you know capable of making the plays necessary to make your average cube rate go up with this. Because I know you're a very aggressive snapper, and having armor in the deck allows you to have more of those aggressive snaps, and that I do think is part of the value to you. At least. Yep. Yeah, I'm snapping turn one and two a lot, <laughs> a lot of games, sometimes three. You know, it's rare. Like, if I'm not snapping by then, it's because I am feel very far behind and I feel incapable to bluff. Like, that, like I'm almost always snapping in those cases. But I also do just have a very high win rate because I'm this deck itself yeah. is good across a good high spectrum of decks, which means that you can just snap most games because you're just like, I'm going to win. Yeah, with the obvious exception of Hello, which is like, if right. they do the thing, you die. <laughs> like, I, is... I almost never snap hella decks. That's, yep. that's pretty much how it works. You just don't snap hella and anything else I'm snapping. That's pretty much my methodology. How much are you keeping track of what your opponents are playing so that you have that information available for early snaps? Well, I keep track of it in my head, but I keep track okay. of it almost every opponent. If I play the same opponent twice, I'm like, they're playing this. And sometimes I swap it up, but it's very rare. A lot of people like to play the same thing over and over again. Tanjo, Loki. You yeah, know? I mean, we, we all know that at this point. <laughs> like, yeah, there's is... a there's a few people that are like this person named Invincible, I think they and they they're, they're hella running people. Hella. Yep. Yep. So it's just like I see them Hella. You know, it's just like I am like don't snap them, just to, like try and play it out for one or two cubes. Maybe if uh, it like goes my way. Sometimes with Hella, they don't draw perfectly. So yeah, like, you I mean, can sometimes <laughs> Gladiator <laughs> scams them a lot because it'll pull out a discard card and discard their card that they didn't want discarded, like Hella or something. So. 
Yeah, it, it it's weird because, like, you have so few outs in that matchup that Gladiator Scam is one of your only actual ones. Where it's like, yep. because, like, they're, they're, there's basically nothing else this deck can do other than roll for, like, a 2 out of 12. And just be like, I hope I get that right. And, uh, yep. like, that that is that is an indicative of just how bad the hell a matchup is for this deck. So I wanted to talk about yeah. one of the other cards that I consider interesting in here. Uh, talk me through Lizard over Jeff. Is this just a straight five is more than three thing or or what? Yeah, five is more than three. It's also another ongoing card to protect your Mobius against the Loki matchup. So a lot of times they'll be running rogue. So you want to make sure that your Mobius has some sort of protection from rogue so you can stick it in the same lane as your lizard. And then it's a risky play. Tanjo many times has gone for that turn four rogue play yeah. into my lizard Mobius and just hoping to win the 50-50. And when he does, it's like he wins the game. When he doesn't, he just auto loses. So, yep. Tanjo Pretty specifically, as a low key player, has always been extremely high on Rogue. Like, no matter what everyone yeah. else is doing, he's much higher on Rogue in his lists. And so you can reasonably expect that. It is interesting just how metagame this seems to be against the people you're playing. Like, that is, that is kind of fascinating, actually. Would you recommend yeah. Lizard, generally speaking, though? Like, let's say you're playing against a bunch of people that never really play Rogue. Is five is more than three still worth it? Uh, I mean, if you're facing, like, specifically lockdown a lot, no, because you, Jeff is going to be better. But if you're facing anything else, I think yes. Well, even Lizard might be better in lockdown, because still five is more than I... three if you can get Lizard into the lockdown lane. So it's just like, but it's just like, the Jeff is going to be more flexible with different locations and with against different matchups. Lizard's going to be better in the Sarah dump kind of way that you're just going to have more power on the last turn to play out. And you can position it. So, I, like, it's going to get the full value. So, Killmonger has been in and out of my Sarah lists recently because of how bad it is in the mirror and how, like, I guess part of it is, like, I feel pretty favored against Thanos decks even without Killmonger for reasons I can't particularly explain. I just do. Uh, where it actually seemed to be good was, like, when I had both Killmonger and Ghost in there. That was very good against a bounce deck. Like, that, like, dominates bounce. But, like... Killmonger tended to be the card I cut for Ghost a lot of the time. So walk me through your thought process on Killmonger, why it stays in here, and what conditions would cause you to take it out. I think right now in this current meta, Killmonger is one of the better cards in the deck because of the rise of Black Cat decks is one thing. So there's a lot of Black Cat drop and one drops, and I, I generally am pretty good at throwing You mean priority. Black Swan? Yeah, sorry, Black Swan. Okay, I, I do like... this all the time. I... <laughs> I do this on my I do this on my stream too. So Black Swan, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Black Swan decks where they're dropping a bunch of one drops. I I have been Killmonger's been crushing those decks. So it's just mm. like they just can't really compete against that. And like you said, bounce. Anytime someone's putting down a demon with their uh from their hood, it's just like that's dead. Yeah. Uh, I've been running into a few Shuri Sauron decks that this is very good against, like the Ebony Maw, like plus the uh zero so it's like those those cards are really big so just like killing those on the board really good and like you said thanos for some this is like killmonger is like less in there for thanos than it is for everything else that's going on in the yeah. meta right now i uh it was weird to realize that because it used to be so much the other way where it was like killmonger was why your thanos matchup was good but they're not a blue marvel deck anymore it kind of just doesn't matter that much like it helps but it's like the things that are winning lanes are the things you need to address not necessarily that stuff and it is just genuinely awful in the mirror. Like, it's just actually a 3-3 three, three in the mirror. And uh, I, having a 3-3 three, three isn't so bad, honestly, in the mirror. Like, because you're trying to, again, like, at least I'm still trying to throw priority just so I can have the Enchantress for the Miss Marvel. Mm -hmm. So it's just like having a 3-3 three, three is just like, I'm just, that's a card that's small enough that I can play it out because I don't really want to play my Glad early because I don't want to get yeah. too much priority. So it's just like, it's just like a fine-ish card. It puts a card on one of the sides for Miss Marvel without too much power. So your view of the mirror dynamics is the entire thing is just Miss Marvel and then Enchantressing Miss Marvel on turn six? Yeah, pretty much. Throw priority, Miss Marvel, yep. Yep, okay. Your favorite card of all time, Gladiator. My has favorite. Finally, yeah, he's finally taken his slot, his rightful slot as the best three drop in the game on the grounds of he is twice the vanilla stat line, which interestingly is basically the bar for playability with four drops, but you know, whatever uh gladiator as a 3-8 you mentioned not playing him for priority without ghost in this deck that is a legitimate consideration however without sarah in your hand 
it feels like there are often situations where you're caught between, oh, I might not be able to play this, and, oh, I actually really want to make sure I get eight power out here when I have the ability to do that. So how would you navigate those situations when you're not holding a Sarah? It's turn three. You do feel like you have to throw priority. It's going to be important, but you also want to make sure you get that eight power. Yeah, if I... It, depending on the matchup, if I have to throw priority to win the matchup, I'm not playing Gladiator ever. Like, that's just like... But if it's like any other matchup where it's just like not necessary 100% required, because Gladiator is such a big card with Miss Marvel too, you're just able to overstat like normal decks. Like, you have enough stats in your control throw priority deck because of a big card like Gladiator. So I, I don't mind throwing it out there and just overstatting people potentially. Just being able to play around, like, because you only have to win two games or two lanes in Marvel Snap. So it's like you can still try and mind game your opponent and stack the lanes that you want and make sure that you win those two. Like, they, they can go tall in one lane, you go tall in the other. So, Gladiator still able to be played unless you need to throw a priority to kill cards with like Shang or something like that. Like, if you're playing some deck, like, mo most decks, you don't have to hard throw a priority. So, it's it's kind of fine to just tempo out most of the time. One of the secrets of this deck is that it's playing the most above rate two drop, the most above rate three drop, and the most above rate four drop in the same shell. And that is, of course, Maximus at double the vanilla stat line of two, three, two, six, Gladiator at double the vanilla stat line of three, four, three, eight, and Miss Marvel at above double the vanilla four stat line of four, six at four, fourteen. Without those cards, do you think this deck legitimately holds up, or is it very much like, yeah, you can play all this tech, but the reason the deck works is because you have these three extremely above-rate threats to present alongside all the tech? I do think it like the deck would hold up just a lot worse, obviously. So it's just like it would go from being like an S-tier deck to being like a Tier 2 deck if you didn't have... Over, like, if you took out Maximus Gladiator and Miss Marvel and replaced it with, like, I don't know, Ghost and some other, like, smaller cards that are just, like, more fair stats, I think, like, you could, like, a lot of people have actually been cutting Miss Marvel for the new Omega Red, which is a bit more fair. It's a, it's a 410 at least, right? So it's like, or 411. So it's, it's like, 411 it's a, works. Yeah, but it, like it, it's pretty good with, with your gladiator in in a lane, so it's like it's possible to play out. But yeah, it's only three power in the other lane, so it's not as much of a benefit. So it's harder to really justify because it's like you're overstatting one lane to make sure you win it, and then you're getting less power in the other lane. So Miss Marvel is obviously better, but Miss Marvel has more conditions. So like the extra conditions sometimes don't work out because sometimes you're like I I run into this issue a lot with this deck because you have to pay very close attention to your lanes miss marvel lane so you it's so restrictive and like i can't put my lizard and my maximus in the same lane i can't yeah. do like all those things so it's like a lot of the times i was stuck with like three two drops in my hand because i'm like both my sides have two drops on it i can't play another two drop so it's just like it's literally just negative power if i play my two drops out on the side so it's just like there's that problem so i think miss marvel is limiting in that way but omega red is obviously just less power See, that's part of the reason I was so surprised that you opted it for Lizard over Jeff, because Jeff is like a one, like, it solves those problems for you by being one of those two drops. You're like, oh, I can just move it to the middle or, oh, I'm good here, right? Like, it's totally fine on that. And I think that, like, it also helps you solve these, like, throw for priority situations because you slap Jeff in the lane that you're already winning. Like, I don't know. I, I, I've enjoyed Jeff in this deck, but I, I do understand that five is significantly more than three. So I, I am fairly compelled by five being more than three. That's real. That's super real. So this is your most updated build of the deck. You have replaced Shadow King with Absorbing Man and Armor with Jeff. Can you walk me through those changes, specifically the removal of Shadow King first? And then we'll talk about adding Absorbing Man. Yeah, so Shadow King, I took out because there's not many matchups right now that are, like, buffing cards uh, in the way that Shadow King can affect it. Like, there's, like, a blob that is in the game somewhat, not really that much. Uh, but for the most part, it's just raw stats out there or ongoing cards. So both of those Shadow King is ineffective against. So I'd rather just have another card that I could do two things, like a double Shang or a double Enchantress or something like that. I'd rather do that than play a Shadow King out. Shadow King is obviously nice at two power or two energy. But Absorbing Man, I think, is 
one extra tech card that you can play. And sometimes you can shang on turn five and then absorb man turn six and they don't see it coming. Things like that. So there's a, a few extra tech things that you can do that are going to be a little bit more tricky. Uh, absorb man, though, I've, I've only been playing this for the last day and a half. And it does seem to still be like the weakest card in the deck. And it's just, again, just like another surprise card that like people aren't expecting. So it's won me a couple, couple of games, but it's still, I think, very swappable. And like, like it's just there to surprise people. So let's talk about that specific role, the 12th card slot. We've talked about armor in that slot. We've talked about Shadow King in that slot. We've talked about Absorbing Man in that slot. Are there any other cards you think you'd consider for 12th card in this deck surprise people? Uh, I, yeah, there, there's a lot. Um, <laughs> in my video that I put out... It give me, was give just me one like, to put on screen, hold on. Put on, one to put on screen? Yeah, give me I, just like I, a six um i had like some like people put in like quake uh, sure. i think literally dexter just put out a video that he he just he had quake in it um like i i mentioned like just something super random like heimdall or something you know just right. like something absolutely insane just like i think you could put in just like literally any card that does something surprising like spider-man juggernaut just like something that's just like you wouldn't expect to come down on the last turn or you could do a, a turn early, like you could throw a leech in here or something. You know, it's just like legion, for example. Like yeah, legion, legion's a great example. Like that, but that was like something people are already doing, so it's like nothing right. new. Like that's like, uh, like even like a lady death strike. I don't know. I'm just like looking through cards. It's just like something crazy that just like you wouldn't see it coming. I would not see a lady death strike coming. That is that is actually 100 percent accurate. I have uh, one question though. Any consideration for Cosmo? I'd say yes. Actually, my original list had Cosmo in it. Like, so when I first started streaming, uh, just when I was doing my Climbing Ring 1, Cosmo was in the deck. I cut it midstream just because I wasn't running into many uh, decks that I could really do much with it. And it was ending up blocking my Chi more than helping, which happens yeah. sometimes, similar to the armor. But yep. it's like Cosmo's a... Like, it not only blocks Chi, it, blo it like protects lanes for Enchantress and some other things. But it does do... like. It's great for the Hella matchup because you can sometimes cheese out blocking their Hella or blocking a discard card. Uh, it's also great for blocking people that are trying to stop your Miss Marvel or your Mobius. So like that kind of thing. It, it's just like good anti-tech and it's good for placing your Gladiator and your Maximus on. So there are some considerations there, but I really, it, it's a very difficult card to play and it takes a lot of pre-planning whenever you're going to play it out. One more uh, question mark here, where it's just like, you are already a Zabu deck, right? Like, you don't have a ton of things that this guy wants to duplicate, but he has six stats. Sometimes you high roll a Miss Marvel, things of that nature. Would you ever consider an Iron Lad in there? Because it's like, you're, it's like, oh, I didn't draw Shang-Chi, but there's, you know, two cards in my deck. I got a 50-50 at that Shang-Chi. That seems like a you style thing to do. Yeah, I. it is one less card, though, that you can tempo, I think, because it's there we run a lot of bad cards for this specifically yeah. gladiator maximus, maximus lizard so all of those are like really bad rolls and so you really just can't tempo this card out very nicely with the current version so you'd have to tweak the deck a lot to make iron lad work you'd have to go more into like the heavier tech side so i used to run like a sarah doom deck with iron lad that was like very similar a lot of tech cards but I just ran sarah doom high end so like you would only low roll like a shang chi that just hit nothing so it's like that's not that bad, but in this deck, it's like there's a lot of really bad low rolls, and then there's like very little upside, like because you're like maybe getting a Miss Marvel, maybe getting a Sarah, and that's like your best case scenario, and that's that's it. This guy seems kind of compelling to me, just like a, a guy that's like I'm gonna win a lane here. Uh, that that, that seems like kind of interesting in the context of cards you could play in there just to surprise people. Would there be like I, I, we're just going through like a, a like a laundry list of potential changes to the deck? Of these, do you think Absorbing Man stands head and shoulders among any of the above any of the ones that I've showed you, or do you think that like they're all basically the same guy? I think they're all basically the same. It's just really dependent on like how you want to execute your game plan and like what your opponent is expecting or not expecting. I think so. Like Juggernaut, they would never expect that in a Sarah Tech deck. I think, and Juggernaut is probably one of the cards that like I lose the most cubes to out of any other card, just because I'm I'm never expecting it unless they're playing Surfer. So it's just like. If it's in any other deck, or even if it is just in Surfer, I forget about it in Surfer all the time, too. So it's just like, 
it's such a unique card, but the one problem with Juggernaut is it's just like you have to be sure that you have enough power in what other two lanes that you're running. But it yeah. could mess up like their Miss Marvel or something. So it's just like it's a good card in that sense, but you have to overstat one of the other lanes to compensate for you throwing their cards over. So with this current version of the deck, do you have any specific play tips for people who aren't particularly familiar with it? Because I know you play the deck very aggressively. So walk us through how you approach these matchups. Yeah, so I think one of the, one big mistake a lot of people make is just tempoing cards. So a lot of times you're trying to decide how much do you need to throw priority and you you generally want to skip more often than you would think. Like there's a lot of times you're just not playing cards like I will literally skip an entire turn four, even if I have Miss Marvel in hand, because it's better than just having your Miss Marvel Enchantress or Rogue or something later on, or taking priority on accident because you played it out. Like you, especially if you have an early Zabu, you want to skip more often if you have a Zabu out because that means you're able to play more cards at the end. Because if you have Zabu and Sarah, so early Zabu good for skipping extra. If you don't have Zabu, sometimes you have to tempo things out. Be careful with your Miss Marvel placement of cards. So you are almost always playing everything but Miss Marvel on the left and right. You're always separating your twos and your threes on the left and right. That's like one of the, that's the one I'm always thinking. I'm always thinking, where are my twos going? Where are my threes going? And Because those are your main cards to spread out with your Miss Marvel. And you usually put Sarah on the left and right as well, just as the, one of the other cards. Uh, sometimes you can put uh, one of your twos and threes in the middle, just depending on the locations for extra power with your miss marvel to make sure you win that lane but yeah you got to really don't double stack and that's that's pretty much for every deck right now you almost want to do that just in case and as far as snapping goes you just feel like the deck itself is favored into basically everything but hella so you're snapping aggressively whenever you have anything resembling a normal hand uh i'm like almost always snapping if i have zabu sarah like in hand that's like i gar like i'm guaranteed just like i'm snapping as long as like the locations aren't complete ass uh, and then I am snapping into certain matchups. Like if destroy is just like one of the best matchups that you have. So you just, well, when I ran Shadow King, it was one of the best matchups. Now it's, it's a little bit worse. Cause I took out armor and Shadow King, which were, the, <laughs> I'm just not, pretty good I'm not, there. I'm not facing destroy anymore. And that's why sure. I swapped those cards out. Like when it destroy was more popular, it was just like a free win with those other cards in there. So just like you face destroy, you're just like snap. Uh, I won. It's just like game's over. Like they almost can never beat the other version of the deck, the one that we started looking yeah. at. So it's just like those, that, those kind of matchups. You're just like, all right, well, this is no contest. Uh, but yeah, most most decks, it's, it is kind of like that. Like it, it, sometimes if you don't get either Zabu or Sarah or if the opponent is playing Mobius, you're a little bit uh, worse off. And that's like I'm a little bit more hesitant to snap. Like if I'm playing against like a Loki deck and I don't draw Mobius, I'm not snapping. So it's just like yeah. that's like pretty much how it goes. But the second I draw Mobius against uh, Loki, I'm just like snap. It's just those kind of things. So is the Shang abs, man, is that aimed at Hella? Is that like, is that the idea here is we get to Shang-Chi two lanes without priority? Is that where this is going? Uh, I kind of, yeah. It's a little bit aimed at Hella, yes. Uh, that, that was the main thought process behind it was to beat Hella decks. Uh, but it Does doesn't it work. work that okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so, sometimes. Okay. It works when you have Zabu. That's yeah. pretty much how it works. Yeah, you need If you have Zabu, Zabu and Sarah... Sarah because you have to be able to throw priority and have enough power to beat their lanes. Yeah. So the only way to do that is to have Zabu and Sarah. So I'm pretty much still just leaving the game if I don't have Zabu and Sarah. But it does mean you actually have an out that isn't just gladiator, get lucky, discard a Hella. That is an out, yep. right? Like, it does help. It's just, I think the question is, like, is that worth the lost equity against, say, something like Destroy compared to the previous build? And, like, that's entirely yeah. just going to be dependent on what you queue into. Yep, and I've, I've faced, like, one Destroy deck out of the last, like, 50 games, and I've faced Hella, like, 20 of the last 50, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wanted to improve my Hella matchup at the expense of... at that, so... Yeah. It, it, but I'm, I'm not playing this deck anymore, <laughs> is one thing, uh, because of all the Hella. There's too much Hella, so it's just, like, if, if your meta turns out to be too much Hella, this deck, like, equity goes way down. That's the one, one consideration, so... And then you but swap two, say it, say it. Say it. <laughs> Say it. K KM's favorite deck. Yes. I I have like a ninety five percent win rate in my last like twenty games with it. Uh it's Loki. Loki yeah. good. Yeah. Loki good. We're ending the video there. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no, no. We're, we're we're not actually ending the video. You gotta do your self promo stuff, so we're gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dara Loki good. Loki good. Oh, yeah. 
where can everyone find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitch almost every day. Uh, I, people say that's a scam, but I do stream mostly uh, every day on twitch.tv slash DaraJN, D-E-R-A-J-N, and on YouTube at DaraJN. I sometimes post a video once a month, hopefully more, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you can also find him at rank one on the ladder. I feel like I set you up for that. You didn't take the, you didn't, you didn't. Yeah, just, I just if you like... go, go take a look at the leaderboard, <laughs> you can see me at the very top. That's yeah, right. I, I, feel, I, I think like, I'm I, still there right now. I hope so. that age as well. Cause like this video is going to come out on like Tuesday and it's just going to be like, you're going to, you're going to like, you're going to have gone on a <laughs> loss streak and it's going to be like, oh man, we flexed that for nothing. Well, as of recording, Tanjo's on a loss streak right now. He was, let's up go. There. <laughs> I am now, yeah, I'm, I'm currently like, 12 eight points above number two so nice all right not 